Lesson number six, what we must teach our daughters. Structure of a marriage. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Now, the warning here, and you can look out your window. See that the warning is that if you break this scripture, you will break the family and the church. And today the family unit and the church are broken because the key word of structure is position God has set forth that we must say in 2016 that a man and a woman are to be husband and wife we got to set that forth. what is gonna be the broken marriage when you get two men or two women that's not a God-ordained marriage. It's broken already from the start. You have had the foundation upon sin. That's not going too well. That's not going to go so well. That's not going to do good in the future. And you wait till you start reaping those sinful tendencies to go ahead and let same-sex marriage or sodomites. We have not seen a reaping of that yet, but we have seen what we're going to study today. We have seen this broken in the family. I'm sorry to say that you got children growing up today who don't even know who their father is. You got broken families destroyed. Because we disobey the Bible, and I mean we as the world in general. And me, I've violated the family. All have sinned, come to short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. So, structure, foundation. When you begin a family, you got to have a sure foundation under your family or the man that built his house upon the sand when the storms came when the waves blew the house had utter destruction now these videos are for saved fathers to their daughters i don't believe that two unsaved people getting married has a foundation on jesus christ that's impossible so it's already bound to fall. Yeah, they can get married 60, 70 years. And, and where are they going to end up in eternity? Ephesians 5.21. And I will start there. Submitting. Oh, that is a bad word. That's a bad word that needs to be changed. We got to get that out. Because we're not going to submit ourselves. Now women. National Organization for Women will not do submitting. Something bothered my eyes. Thank you. Sorry. Submission is an evil, wicked word in this day and age. We've got rights. We won't submit to God in our churches. We won't submit ourselves to our employer unless it benefits us in the paycheck or days off or whatever. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now, excuse me. Yourselves. Where is the male, female, husband, wife designation? It's not. And yet we're going to go into the family. And God starts out submitting yourself, husband and wife, together. No designation of male or female. The fear of God. So a foundation of a family is submission and fear of God. Well, there's the lacking. There's no fear of God today. It's very rare. 
if somebody fears God. There's no submission. Very rare. There are some marriages I've met, plenty of them. The wife rules the roost. She's the the husband's henpecked. That's not a God ordained marriage. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands <coughs> as unto the Lord. Fear of God. So, our daughters need to find someone who will be submission, 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 submission to our daughters. As he expects our daughters to be in submission to him. And the next qualifying clause is he better fear God. So you remember, he ought to be saved. He ought to have a good reputation of the preacher. He ought to attend the church. He ought to be evangelistic. He ought to read his Bible. He is also to fear God. You know, I can go out evangelistic just because I want to. I can read my Bible just because I want to. But I don't. I can do it without the fear and devotion to God. I can just make it a habit without God. So the classes that we run into now a lost marriage. What I mean, a lost husband and a lost wife. You got a saved and a lost marriage. One person saved, one person's lost. You got a lukewarm marriage. They're both saved, but they're just making God sick. You got a cold marriage. They're saved, but they ain't doing nothing. You got a hot marriage. The husband and wife are involved serving the Lord and doing all they can for the Lord. You got a dead marriage. It's just dead. They're married by a piece of paper and a piece of paper only. And then you got widowship. She was married. Death did her part. So, going back to the submission yourselves husband and wife trouble in marriage lies not fearing God the fear of the Lord brings understanding the fear of the Lord brings instruction the fear of the Lord brings knowledge you need knowledge wisdom and understanding in a marriage you need God and God is not going to step in if you don't fear him. You don't seek him. You don't love him. Submitting is surrendering, resigning, and yielding. Webster's 1828 Dictionary on Submit. You sacrifice for the other. Now, love has three characteristics, three categories. This is my own. Okay. Number one, I would say, I want you. That's lust. Lust of the flesh. It's all what you can do for me. And nothing about you. One night stand. Uh, I can brag about you Monday morning at work. That's lust. That's rock and roll. That's fornication. That's adultery. Without marriage. Love, number two, is what is acceptable and good. It may not last. It may last. There's feeling. But there's no God. There's no fear. You stride it out. You Seek it out, you, and not much. 
Yeah, and it could be a happy marriage. I think I said the in my eyes all. That's how Satan gets things out. He don't want this preached. Make sure I pulled the plug on the thing. Charity number three. Now this is submitting, surrendering, resigning, yielding. Now you gotta love is it's for the other person. Now, lust, love, or charity, what would that be? When we look at the eyes of God through Jesus Christ to us. For God so loved the world that he gave. There's a sacrifice. See, God shows us a sacrificial love of giving, of yielding. <coughs> if you don't fear God, you're not going to be able to show that, <coughs> that love. The person that you want to marry better respect you. And have your best interest in mind and not theirs. That's what you're going to have to seek out for our daughters in that man. Who is he thinking about? Marriage is legal and binding. You can be married and have no relationship. It can be just a piece of paper. The love may have gone cold many years ago. And we're just staying together for the kids or just staying together. You got to build. We got to imply to our doors. They got to build and maintain that relationship. It takes work. It takes effort. It takes sacrifice. It's not going to come easy. And there's going to be some things that you're going to have to give up. There's going to have to be some things that you're going to have to fight for. There's going to have to be some things that, you know what? You better have God on your side. 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. This is the number one, one reason why a wife is not to work outside the home. You say, where do you get that from? If she submits to another man, a boss a manager, an owner of a company, not the husband, she violates the scripture. Read the scripture. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband. Man. Now, a family business, the husband is the head, the boss, the proper. That's proper. If she's going to work, as long as that husband is over her, telling her what to do, and no one else, that's proper. But when you put her where she has to listen to another male and obey him, I think that used to be one of the vows. Love, honor, obey. Excuse me. I gotta watch how I say that word. That vow is to the husband and to the wife. But we're talking about the wife now. And we'll, we'll talk about when we get to the virtuous woman in Proverbs. Jobs and income that's proper for the wife. I'm not saying the wife's not to work. I'm not saying that at all. When we get to that woman in Proverbs, man, that woman is working. She is hard. She is, man, she's bringing in money. But to her own husband, no one else's. You're going to send her out in the workplace to a guy who's over her and who could be married to someone else, her own husband? Listening to another one's husband? You're getting a little contradiction in terms here now. So the first broken thing of marriage is that there's no fear of God. Number two, there's no submission. Number three, we are putting our wives in control of other men for the authority. God has an authority set for the family, and now it's been broken. 
and we are such a state that wonderful God bless America and all that, and we've got the republic, and we got the constitution, and, and we are such a form of democracy. you got to send the white to work almost today. The pay rate of these companies paying their employees is totally ridiculous, and I'm going to stop there before I go off on that trail. But the employers make it so the employees can't even make a living, but I'm stopping there. Her own husband and no one else's. So her authority is to be not the boss. And husbands, you're not the boss of your house. That's anti-scripture. Siblings. No one is to tell that woman what to do. She is to submit to no other sibling but her husband. Even the pastor. The Bible says, if she has a question, let her go home and be taught of her husband. She may begin relying on the pastor more than her husband if he's got the answer. Her reliance is to be on the husband, not the pastor. What if the pastor dies? What if the church folds? Who is she going to go to now? How about magazines? Now she picks up one of those magazines. Oh, this is what I'm supposed to do for my family. This is how I'm supposed to treat my husband. A magazine is not a husband. It's not something to be in submission to. Or a parent. Her parents, your parents, or someone else's parents. She's not to be in submission to them but her husband. And to any book that tries to correct a marriage. There's only one book she's to follow, and that's the Bible. And the Bible says she's to submit to her husband as unto the Lord, capital L. Remember what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 7? Marriage hinders the service to God. It's not 100%. You see, the order we're going to see is God, Jesus Christ, husband, wife. That's the order. Now see, the wife, the woman, your daughter may want to serve God. But she's to submit to her own husband as unto the Lord okay she may want to pray he wants dinner guess who wins the husband he gets his dinner she can pray while she's making dinner but maybe she wants to get up go off and be alone he gets his dinner she may want to set time to read the Bible well he wants sex you mean sex over the Bible reading as unto the Lord? Now, hopefully the husband will be understanding, but she may want to make a baby blanket or sweater or something for a woman in church who's going to have a baby for a baby shower, but he wants his clothes washed. Guess who gets the time? And remember we talked about the single, the virgin, not being married. She can serve the Lord. She can, she can be in her house. You know what? I just want to go out and go pass out tracks right now. I got to go to the grocery store, but I'm just going to go pass out tracks, grocery store, get, and she don't need no permission. She don't need to look to no man that is going to hinder her work. Now, I would hope if she wants to pray, I would hope maybe the husband would say, okay, let's pray together. Then he... Hopefully, time to read her bio. May I hope he would. Let's read a bio then later on. I hope he would be that understanding. You may want to give money for a missionary, but the other wants a restaurant, wants to be away from the stove for a day. We've already talked about that one. The man, the husband, may want to go to a men's prayer meeting breakfast. She wants time alone to be with him. Guess who wins? The men's prayer breakfast goes, the wife comes in. Now you see what we're talking about? 
things you want to do for God may be things that you got to do for your spouse. And they may not want to do it with you. Or they may. I hope they would. 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. Broken families, number two. No fear of God, number one. And the structure of the family, number two. The husband is the top of that family, the head. The husband is the head of the house, the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. The wife cannot jump over the husband and get to God. He's already jumped, she's already jumped the husband and Jesus. Well, she'll jump where she is and go straight to Jesus. She bypassed her husband. And in the military, you can't do that. You, you can't get a GI, walk up to the, to the White House, to the commander-in-chief of the military and say, I've got the man. You can't do that. you got to go through ranks. And that's exactly how God is with the family. There's ranks. He is to be like Christ. So we need to teach our daughters. <coughs> the husband that you choose is to be Christ-like. As much as he can be. That's a commandment. And a wife's authority is to her husband more than Jesus Christ as unto the Lord. Now the question comes to that man. Who is his authority? The Bible says Jesus Christ. Your future husband's authority set for your daughter better be Jesus Christ. Not the job. Not fishing or hunting. That man who wants to marry your daughter better listen to Jesus Christ better than more than anything else. Because in the structure of family, that man is between Jesus and her. You cannot expect her to leap over the husband and break the chain of command and expect God to bless her. The wife is the next in the chain of command. God, Jesus, husband, wife. 24. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, supposed to be, supposed to give your allegiance to Jesus Christ and do what he tells us to do, not with your worldliness and your satanicness and what you like. Don't care what you like, what's the Bible saying? So let the wives be their own husbands in everything. The church does not adhere to Christ. It's broken. Many, many, many churches are broken because they don't adhere to what Christ. And the marriage doesn't adhere to the spouse. So the church and marriage, the problems today is they're walking together hand in hand with the same trouble no submission no fear of god no allegiance to jesus christ the structure is broken in both the church and the family dads when it comes to our daughters we've got to make sure when they two come together they are building a sure church a sure family where two or three are gathered together we have already said he is to be saved that is beyond a question of a doubt where two or three are gathered together together, there am I in the midst of them. When you put a, 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 your daughter and a, another guy together as husband and wife, Jesus Christ is to be there. And there are rules set for those two to meet in perfect fellowship with Jesus Christ. Don't send them two into marriage if you've got a broken link in the chain. Why are churches and family broken? Because Christ has become the servant of the church and not the head. 
The church has told Jesus Christ, you're going to accept what we're going to do. You're going to accept our rock and roll. You're going to accept our hand waving. You're going to accept our miracle. You're going to accept the Christmas tree. You're going to do what we do, church. To Jesus. And when you say, oh, you're wrong about this relation, what is the church to Jesus Christ? The bride of Jesus Christ. So when the bride steps out and tells Jesus Christ, the husband, what to do, you've broken Ephesians 5. Just like wives give orders and take the command of the family. The husband. A proper church listens to Jesus Christ. A proper family, the wife listens to the husband. A broken church tells Jesus what to do. A broken marriage, the wife tells the husband what to do. And what are the examples of these? See Eve and Jezebel. Eve did all the talking. The Bible says Adam was there. Church and marriage are alike. And they're both suffering from the same disease. Let the wife seek her husband as the church is to seek Christ. Is he, that man your daughter's looking at, is he the blessed hope when returning from home, Titus 2.13? Yeah, she's supposed to want Jesus Christ. But if her husband is to be a type of Christ, does she look forward to him coming home and wanting him to be home? Isn't the church and family alike? Do you really want to see your husband? In the marriage. In your marriage. Years have come by. Do you still want to see him? Do you still want to be with him? Like a Christian is to be for Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13 is my life verse. I want Christ more and more every day. As I want to see my wife and as my, I know my wife wants to see me. My wife told me when I'm going off to work, man, she just gets all upset. She gets... She just can't wait. She counts. And if I tell her I'm going to stop and get a few things before I... She don't like that. She's like, get home. Can you ask your husband for things like prayer? Don't we ask God for things? Well, that man's going to marry our daughters. Can she go to her husband like prayer and say, I need something? How is he going to answer her in prayer? Here we go, another one. How does Jesus answer his, his bride? How is your that groom going to answer your daughter? Yes. When it's proper. We all want a yes answer, but that may not always be good. If the yes is the answer to her or to our prayers, and it would do harm that's not good I mean if I were to if, if the wife turned to her husband and said, let me hold this chainsaw blade while you start it that is not good your 10 year old comes up to you dad can I have the keys to the car I want to go down the road and you hand them you say yes that's not good The wife comes up to her husband and says, I'd like to get that dress. Oh, let me look at the budget. Yeah, you can get the, you can get the dress. Go ahead. Okay. No. When it's not good for you, that will be a proper answer. Dad, can I have the keys for a car? You're 10 years old. No. You can't. The wife. 
Well, I'm going to just take these whole bottles of pills. No, you're not. Now, when you say no, it, it would deprive you, that's not good. See, answer for is yes or no. Wife turns to her husband. Can I eat my dinner? No. Can I sleep in bed with you? No. That's wrong. That's not good. Number three is not now. Not now. It's not proper for the time at present. Ten-year-old kid comes up to you, says, Dad, can I use your razor to shave? No, but when you start growing hair in your face, yes. Your wife comes up to you, she says, I would really like to get that dress. And you look at the budget and say, well, I like to say yes, hon, but this week, this month, we're a little tight. Can we wait a couple more weeks? Can we wait next month? Then if everything is well and I, I'll get you that dress or I'll do something to get you that dress. But right now, it's, I, I can't do it. Now, see, you haven't said yes and you haven't said no, but you left the opportunity that if I can do it, if it's proper, I'll try to work it. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. And understand why say, okay, I understand. And do you see in that life the image of Christ in your husband? Dads, can your wife see you as Jesus Christ? Everything is said. There is no other male in her life. Not even her dad. Like her husband. The Bible records, you got a question? I already said, do not ask the pastor, ask your husband. 1 Corinthians 14, 35 and James 1, 5. 1 Corinthians 14, 35, read that. It says, let the wife keep silent in churches, go home and ask your husband a question. And if he don't know, really, then let him go ask the pastor. Who is she to please? <coughs> Dad, your question should be not you, it should be her husband. The breakdown is when the husband or the Christ lacks the attention from the wife and from the church. That's the breakdown. Something else gets in the way of Christ, something in the way gets in the way of the husband, and there's a breakdown. Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Husbands, love your wives. Do I need to say anything? Do I have to comment? Not the job, not the dog, not the sports, not the food. Love your wives. Too many husbands will stand before Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ, talking to Christians, warriors of the Christian faith, great evangelists, great teachers of the Bible, and they will be guilty for not loving their wives. Ooh, there goes a reward. We are to see as fathers of our daughters, we are to see these characteristics in that man she wants to marry. And when we read for 1 Corinthians 7, if we don't, we have the power of God to say, I don't approve. How's that? Are you ashamed of Jesus? Oh, no, 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 no. And why are you ashamed to show your love to your wife? My wife and I hold hands, kiss in public. It's not a sin. Every once in a while we're at the store, I'll show I love Jesus and I love this woman. I'm not ashamed. I'm not fearful. Oh. 
Paul said, Husbands, love your wife. And then it says, As Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. All right, here's another characteristics that we're to look for the man in our daughter's life. Would you love your wife to death? Read 25 again and put it into your heart. As, what did Jesus Christ do for the church? He gave himself for it. He died upon the cross unselfishly. He gave himself charity. He sacrificed husbands. Well, yeah, you just violated the scripture. How many panty waist husbands do you think are out in the world today that would give their lives for their wife? You want to ask Islam, the moron in Utah, how he'll stand up for his wives? For that guy to stand up for his wives, you got to give him buckshot from a shotgun. All the wives he got and all the pellets from a shotgun. But the Bible says you're to love your wife as Christ loved the church. He gave himself for it. Husband, that husband, that man that's interested in your daughter is to be Christ's example to the modem of that woman. Are you? Christ died for you. Will he die for her? Have you replaced the pleasures? Will he replace the pleasures? For your daughter will he and will your daughter die to sell first Corinthians 7 now neutral ground would be both your daughter and this guy sacrificing charity yielding to each other there will be a common neutral ground and hopefully that will become Jesus Christ and the Bible and serving the Lord now she may like to sow and you may like to hunt you would work those two things out you go out, you go out and hunt the deer and she'll sew them back together I mean oh, wait a minute dear we're supposed to cut them open and eat them oh Bambi was no we're supposed to eat no 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 <laughs> you see you can work things together she might like to do something and you don't you go you find something that you can do while she's enjoying herself and she may not like something you do, she'll do and occupy the time together, sacrifice it again. Look what we got. We've got a marriage that's not about me. It's about you. And it's not about me. It's about you. We're working together. And you may find out the judgment seat of Christ as a wife or as, or as a husband. Wow, you did that. You didn't want to do that. Never wanted to do that. But you did that. Wow. Why can't we surprise our spouses at the judgment seat of Christ and have them look back and say, Wow, you you did that for me. And you never complained or anything. Well, yeah, that's over in the pile of ashes right now, but yeah. <laughs> Tithing, missionary support, knocking on doors, preaching on the street, never you cooking once for her. Oh. Remember you said he said he ought to be an evangelist? But he can't make one meal for her. Well, the guy, you know, he's a, just a terrible cook. I tell you what you do. You, you get her a great meal with a great table and all that. And then later on, you flip a guy a couple 20s or, you know, some money. That's, that's cooking. I get away with that. My wife enjoys my cooking so much. She'll tell you, hey, my husband took me, my husband cooked for me last week. What'd you make? Oh, it was a kind of smorgasbord. But I mean, I mean six tables of food that she can enjoy you did yeah the Chinese buffet that counts as cooking you relieved her being over that hot stove never telling her that he loves her if you never see that guy showing your daughter any kind of flesh that's two words I missed up 
love and affection, something wrong. And you don't have to, like I said, I've already set rules, no touching, no kissing, no, there's things that you can do. He can make the mailman very angry with you because he keeps having to deliver these love letters and cards and the, the, the florist guy's got to keep coming to the door and delivering and stuff like that and just keep on getting candy and I got diabetes and he's driving me nuts because I want her candy. He can do something to show her. If there is no love being shown to your daughter by that guy, that, that's another thing. Because if he can't show her love, he's not going to die for her. Our daughter should be very close to know that that guy should be the one that you will choose will love you more than Jesus Christ. I mean, will love let me take that again. Will love you more than anything except Jesus Christ. I said that wrong. Get that correct. Because Jesus Christ is over him. But there will be nothing that he loves except Jesus Christ but his wife. If he loves Jesus Christ, he will love you. If he loves you more than Jesus, there's trouble. If he love, if he doesn't love you, but wants you, get him packing. 528. 528. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Like you, a little less, she needs deodorant. More than you, she needs shampoo clothes, haircuts. She's just like you. She has needs. Don't keep her humble so you stumble. Give her what she needs. Not loving your wife, the Bible just said, is not loving you. 531, you are one flesh. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother shall be joined to, unto his wife. <coughs> They too, the man and woman, shall be one flesh. Genesis 2.24, it is said, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave, that's not cleaver, that's cleave. See how they ruin the English language? Cleave, that means join to, glue, Velcro. A wife and a husband, according to Genesis 2.24, shall be Velcro. Yeah, that's three words I messed up. Velcro. When you want to depart from each other, you should make that annoying sound. <laughs> That's the most annoying sound ever. It's tearing Velcro apart. Unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And there's no place in the marriage for the in-laws or the outlaws. Your family. You are one together. 31. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and the two, and they too shall be one flesh. You got it? Has it been clear? Husbands, love your wife. You do not badmouth them to other God, other guys. That is not loving to them. Referring to them as the ball and chain is not loving. And I've heard those men in. Baptist churches. They haven't read the Bible. Or they don't know what love is. The old lady makes you the old man. Shut up. We better, our door is better find a man that will always love her. Always. Even in fights, even in disagreements, even, you know, that those spats. He still loves her. Now watch what we said back and forth. Paul sums up Ephesians 5. And by the way, I don't think we're going to do it next time. We may jump to something. Colossians 3.18 is repeated of what we just learned in Ephesians. But what is this marriage and church relationship? This is a great mystery, verse 32. What's a great mystery? The church, the church. The, the marriage, the husband and wife. That's a mystery. 
I speak concerning Christ and the church. You know why churches are failed today? Because families have failed. Marriages have failed. You know why marriages have failed? Because the church has failed. The church is telling Christ what to do. The wife is telling the husband what to do. The family is to look to the church and say, how are we supposed to do? And they're looking at the church and they're getting perverseness. The families that are the structure of the church, the foundation, the building of that church is to be holy and yet it's blemished. So you got a blemish, unholy church. And our relationship, I will not I will not submit to that man. No. The church is the bride of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the bride. So that means that bride, that wife are one in one. That husband and Jesus Christ are one in one. When Paul gives us example of the church, he writes 10 verses. He didn't write any verses, but 10 verses. How about the church? He tells you about a husband and wife relationship. See, all this husband and wife was to tell you about the church. And it tells you very much about the church today. It's ruined. It's decayed. Because there's no fear. There's no submission. There's no love. There's no men. They don't love their wives. She won't submit to him. And he won't give his life for her. That's the breakdown. 